Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. Hey Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I'm from Washington DC. Music can be feeling and fireworks. I got a new video, I got a new video. What do you think? Talk to me in the comments below. You know it, I made it. Hey, thanks. Hey Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I'm ready to go. Eurovision fam! Are you ready for the show? <laughs> I got a new video. I got a new video. Today we're gonna be breaking down all things Diodato, Italy's representative for Eurovision 2020. I reacted with Eurovision Hub, but obviously you only get to see like a fraction of my reaction. So we're gonna be doing a review today because of course we gotta talk about this entry. I mean, it's Italy. Come on. So I did this for Australia and I'm like, I might keep like doing this. We're gonna break down Italy's performance and song for Eurovision 2020. It's crazy because we have like a lot of quality so early this year and I'm like kind of trying to compare it to like last year and I'm like, did we have this much quality last year at this point? And I'm like, maybe we did. Maybe we did. So of course we're gonna get into the video, we're gonna like experience the track together, and then we're gonna talk about it, okay? What? Okay. Oh yeah, my clip kind of starts into it. Okay, I just wanna first start off by saying, I always have high expectations for like Italy and France to be well-dressed. <laughs> It's like, even if it's just gonna be like a simple like pair of slacks and like a button down, like it's something about France and Italy that they just know how to do it very, very well and impeccably, which I don't think is that surprising. And so I actually kind of was a fan of like, sort of like the long, like tailored look. Um, is it crazy that I'm like for this chorus, I almost kind of want him to put his hands out and then like the jacket like flowing in the wind. Is that too much? That might be too much. <laughs> so this is definitely an epic chorus. I think I, I like this vocal. The vocal actually reminds me of the vocal that we had in No Me Vente Pato Niente. You know, so I, I like that. It's very Italian. And I also feel like this song has kind of like like a little bit 90s um, Britpop feel, a little bit in the vibe of the song, which I appreciate. If you've watched my videos, you know that that's a reference that I'm very much so into. You know, I really had high hopes for Italy this year because I, I'm thinking they have like all the momentum. I've, I've been saying that Italy has kind of been getting robbed for a while at <laughs> Eurovision, and I think they're due a win. Yeah, I really like the styling. <laughs> I'm like going back to it. I'm like, I like the button down, I like the jacket. I mean, and again, the chorus is epic. And so that kind of brings it back out. The thing is, with a song like this, you have to be really, really mindful about how you're gonna stage it, too. The staging has to be meaningful. It can't be too much. But you don't wanna just have him like standing on the stage singing with a microphone. Like we can't really do that. I like this part. This is like very like 90s, like alt rock. But then it kind of became pop feel. But I, the stuff that I like. <laughs> like really like stuff that I like to listen to. But see, a part like this is like, this is a lot of instrumentation and like, what are we gonna show on stage, you know? Yeah, this is good. This is a good song, but the thing about this is, there's something very Duncan Lawrence-esque, and I said this in my reaction, and I think someone was just like, how can you draw that conclusion? Because he's, we already know, he's a singer-songwriter and this is like an anthemic track. So Arcade was sung by a singer songwriter and it was an anthemic track. So yes, it is definitely Duncan Lawrence-esque. Okay, so let's start off with the styling. 
because we all know styling matters. I love the way he looks. I love the way he is dressed. I wouldn't even necessarily put him in a color. If we wanted to do a color, I'd be open to maybe like some plays on like a navy, maybe a rich royal blue, or maybe even like a really dark purple or something, just to maybe like not do the I'm dressed in head to toe black, which there were a lot of male singers dressed in black last year. And even like male singers who were singing like upbeat songs, i.e. Mickey Lavenda, was done in black, which I didn't think, I, it's like it didn't matter, but then it's like it does matter. <laughs> Um, so I really love the styling. I love the coat. I love the coat. I love the button down, um, buttoned all the way up. Like he looked great. So let's just get that out of the way. I feel like with this song, it's tricky because it's a song that I like. It's a song that I would listen to, but I don't know if this is Eurovision competitive. I feel like people, when they saw my reaction with Eurovision, they're like, oh, so Alicia doesn't like it. You know, some people are like, well, Alicia, everything isn't about winning. Okay, like, but we're still at a competition, so I'm judging and rating this song in the lens of Eurovision. So I can say I like it, which I do like it, but ultimately the question really is, is how will this perform on the stage? Let me repeat that. The question is, how will this perform on the stage in Rotterdam, the Netherlands? That is the question, ultimately, that we have to think about when we're talking about Eurovision entries. So although I think that this song is great, you know, I think that Italy had like all the momentum, <laughs> like they legitimately did. I think they had all the momentum, they had everything going for them to potentially come and like win this year and win easily. I, I think Italy gives quality, I, I didn't watch the national selection, so I know that there were some people who were like, oh, such and such should have won. I can't speak to that. To me, this is a good song. I can see why it won. The issue that I'm having is, is we now, if we're trying to win, if we're trying to win in Rotterdam, we need to think about, okay, like how are we gonna stage this in a way that will be impactful, but also won't necessarily have people like, well, didn't we already kind of vote for something like this last year, i.e. Arcade? And ultimately, although I think that this is a good song, I don't think that this is bad, but I think for people who are first listening to it, because the thing is, when you are a big five country, the disadvantage you have is I don't think that, and I, I should say, I've been talking about this with Melody Festival and because I kind of think it's like the same principle applies a little bit. When you are a song that competes in the, in the semifinals, people like get possessive of it. They're like, I have to get kind of die hard about this track because I really want it to do well and I really want it to perform well. And I think that that's a good thing. And I think it actually allows these songs to do well because I even think like last year, I love Soul Beat. But I don't think I spend a lot of time talking about how much I liked Soldi because it was already gonna be in the final. So when you're Italy, it's like you really need a song or any big five country, you really need a song that's not only gonna have people really liking it, but kind of have people like die hard for it. And I am concerned, I am concerned that this track just won't be enough to get people to really be like die hard for it. I don't know, I, I I think because it is like, it's a perfectly good song, but we don't know ultimately what the staging is gonna look like. And I think there are some people who have said this before, like, I think Italy has had a hard time-ish when it comes to staging. I don't think the staging has always been right, right. And I think even last year, some people didn't like the way Soldi was staged. I actually didn't mind it, but I kind of was of the class of, what they did on stage wasn't like bad enough to detract from the fact that like Soldi was a great song. But it might not have been enough for someone who's just like a first time viewer who isn't like us, who isn't in this bubble of like following every single song like when it drops. So if you're that person where you're just getting into it, I don't know if this song is going to pull you enough to where you're like rabid about it and like, no, 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 this song must win. So, yeah, so I'm kind of concerned for Italy a little bit. I think it's a good song, but do I think that this is Eurovision competitive? As of now, no. 
I, I really, really don't think that this is Eurovision competitive. And I think mostly because it is going to be direct to final. So then it's already kind of working at a little bit of a disadvantage because, you know, the focus is going to be on those songs a little bit more. The focus is going to be on those songs that are going to have to fight it out for their way to get into the final. So yeah, that's what I think. What do you think about my comments? Do you agree with me? Talk to me in the comments below. Do you disagree with me? That's totally fine too. You know that's cool because this is a conversation. Talk to me in the comments below. Don't forget to like and to subscribe because I got more content coming for you. <laughs> Let's get excited for Eurovision 2020. Oh, and don't forget, I am actually going to be traveling to Stockholm, Sweden for Melody Festival in the grand final. So you obviously need to stay locked because I'm going to be giving like insider scoop stuff on Melody Festival and talking to all your favorite Melfest artists. So yeah, even if you have ideas for questions, like tweet me, my, my Twitter, it's pretty easy, at Alicia Michelle. <laughs> Bye.